As of the making of this video, Brawl Stars has recently begun its 18th season. With all of these different seasons, it's safe to say that some are better than others. However, in the Brawl Stars community, there is one season that stands apart from the rest as a lot of people view it as their favorite season, and that is Season 2, The Summer of Monsters. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Season 2, talk about all that it had to offer, and why I believe so many people like this season so much. Here's the order of how we're going to do things. We're going to start with the Brawl Pass, then move on to game mode changes, and then finish off with cosmetics and other features. When talking about the Brawl Pass, I feel like there's really only one place where we can start from, and that was the second ever chromatic brawler that was added to Brawl Stars, Surge. Surge was and is a really fun brawler in Brawl Stars due to his super, which upgrades him every time he uses it. This was a pretty interesting mechanic back in 2020, and it's still something that makes Surge stand out in the current landscape of Brawl Stars. When Surge was released, he pretty much immediately became the best brawler in Brawl Stars. Gale, who was the brawler released during the Season 1 Brawl Pass, was somewhat underwhelming so having Surge be an incredibly broken brawler was a nice change of pace. Even now, Surge is a really good brawler, and you could honestly argue that he is the best brawler in the game. Of course, Surge has had his ups and downs, but in general, he has been a consistently good brawler in Brawl Stars. When people reminisce about Season 2, I feel like Surge is the first thing that comes to people's minds. A super unique and super strong brawler that has made a lasting impact on Brawl Stars. So now that we've talked about Surge, let's talk about the actual Season 2 Brawl Pass. Compared to the very first Brawl Pass, this one was a little bit different. First things first is that this Brawl Pass was the first that contained two skins. Season 1 only had Merchant Gale at the end of the Brawl Pass, but Season 2 added the Tier 1 skin along with the last tier skin as well. For this season, the Tier 1 skin was Super Ranger Brock, but we'll talk more about that when I discuss the rest of the skins. This Brawl Pass was also two weeks longer than the first one, now being 10 weeks long compared to to the previous one being only 8. And to compensate for this, they made the pass 10 tiers longer, going from 60 tiers to 70 tiers. This set the standard for all Brawl Passes in the future to be 70 tiers as well. And of course, with more tiers, there were more rewards, which is always a good thing. While the current Brawl Pass provides even more value than the Season 2 Brawl Pass, the rewards that you got were still pretty good, all things considered. I feel like the second most talked about thing in regards to Season 2 was the new game mode that was added, Super City Rampage. This was the first PvE weekend game mode that Brawl Stars had added in a really long time. Apart from Robo Rumble, Boss Fight, and Big Game, Super City Rampage was the only new addition. And let's just say that it was an interesting game mode to say the least. Basically with this event, there was this massive dinosaur type monster on the map, and you and two others had to take it out before it would destroy the rest of the environment. The dinosaur would stomp, chomp, and jump on all the buildings, and it was your job to take it out. I vividly remember playing this game mode back in the day, and it was honestly pretty boring. Unlike a boss fight where the robots would try to attack you and you had that fight back, the dinosaur would only target its surroundings unless you were right next to it. This created a gameplay experience that wasn't really engaging and lacked in overall depth. Also, there were so many exploits that you could do with this game mode, as OJ highlighted in this video. You could permanently stun the dinosaur with both super and second star power. There is a bug with Gale and his spring ejector gadget that would confuse the dinosaur. You could destroy a select few buildings with Colt to completely stop the bot. And with a B, BB, and Gale team, you could permanently slow the bot. And that's not even all of the exploits. There were even more, but I think those are just the four most popular ones. Exploits are fun for the first few days or even the first week, but when they exist for too long, they take away from the functionality of the game mode. Overall, Super City Rampage was a cool concept, but it was just executed poorly, and it was removed from Brawl Stars less than two years later, on March 1st, 2022, and it most likely will never return. Anyway, moving away from Super City Rampage, there were some other major game mode changes that were pretty important. Of course, as with every season, there was a brand new environment. You've been seeing the environment with the Super City Rampage footage, but it was used in other game modes as well. Brawl Stars is normally characterized by its bright and vibrant color schemes that are high in saturation and contrast, but this environment from Season 2 was the exact opposite of that. It has a very industrial feel to it, and I really like it, even though 
it does deviate from what Brawl Stars traditionally does. We also got the rope fence as a new object on maps. This may not seem like a big deal, but adding a boundary where brawlers can't move past it, but can shoot through it, is more important than you might think. Also during the season, Hot Zone became a permanent game mode. Personally, Hot Zone is my third favorite game mode in the game behind Brawl Ball and Solo Showdown, so I was really excited about this back in 2020. Hot Zone is currently one of the staple game modes in Brawl Stars, and I don't think the game would be the same without it, honestly. It's a super fun game mode that centers around control and a semi-aggressive playstyle, and as I said earlier, I honestly love it. Now let's talk about all of the cosmetics for this season. We're going to start with pins and emotes because these changes are actually very important and then we'll move on to skins. So as I said, there were some massive changes to pins. This was the first season where you could actually use them in the middle of the game. You couldn't do that previously during season one. So this was massive. Now what you all been waiting for, let's talk about every skin that became available in season two. We'll start with the tier one Brawl Pass skin, Super Ranger Brock. I personally love this skin because I used to watch a lot of Power Rangers growing up and my favorite was the Blue Ranger from Power Rangers Jungle Fury who used the Jaguar Zord. So I'm a little biased, but I think it's a cool skin nonetheless. Then the tier 70 skin was Mecha Paladin Surge. Even compared to the rest of the tier 70 Brawl Pass skins, this one still holds up despite it being almost three years old. It looks cool and it fits Surge really well as a whole. Next is Retro Nani, who is a 29 gem skin. Not too much to say about it. It's basically just a recolor, but it was Nani's first ever skin. So I guess that's worth something. Then we have Streetwear Max, who is a 79 gem skin. This might just be me personally, but I don't really like this skin. There's plenty of 79 gem skins that are more valuable, where you get things like animation changes and better changes to the brawler model. One example of this is the Dino Leon skin, which is 79 gems and makes Leon look totally different. Also, if you wanna learn about the entire history of Leon, be sure to check out my complete history of Leon video with the info card right now, or you can wait and click the link at the end of this video. Anyway, next is King Crab Tick, who is also a 79 gem skin. This is by far my favorite Tick skin in the game, and even though I rarely play Tick, I always enjoy seeing the skin when I do play him. Then we have Ultra Driller Jackie, who is 149 gems. This skin looks pretty cool, but I don't think it's worth 149 gems. I think it would honestly be better suited at 79 gems. Now on the other hand, I think Mega Beetle B is definitely worth 149 gems. It's a massive brawler overhaul with custom animations as well as custom voice lines. 100% more valuable for what you're getting. Then on top of all of these skins, we got the first ever wave of true silver and true gold skins. In this release, we got skins for Ems, Leon, Piper, El Primo, and Shelly. As with all true silver and true gold skins, they are just recolors, but they are a decent flex if you have the gold to get them. And honestly, probably the biggest change for cosmetics during this season was the fact that Crow finally got his remodel. He was updated to fit the current rendition of Brawl Stars, and also his skin White Crow got a remodel as well. Crow definitely needed a remodel, and it was nice that he finally got one. That's it for skins, but there's one other cosmetic feature that I wanted to highlight. The music. I really love the music for this season, and it's sad that we most likely won't hear it again for a very long time. We've officially covered everything that happened in Brawl Stars during Season 2. One quick note is that I decided not to mention balance changes because I feel like that would make this video a lot longer than it needs to be. So let's answer the question that I posed at the beginning of this video. Why do so many people like Season 2? Well, I think that answer comes down to one simple word. And nostalgia. Season 2 is a great season, but it's not the best. Newer seasons have had much better Brawl Pass rewards, skins, environments, and gameplay changes, but people still hold Season 2 in such high regard. I think this is primarily because people remember the times associated with Season 2 more fondly than Season 2 itself. For context, Season 2 was released during July 2020, which was right in the middle of the pandemic. Everyone was stuck inside, school was online, 
and people really had nothing to do. With this being the case, people started to play a lot more video games, and Brawl Stars was definitely included within that. Despite the world on the outside not doing so great, a lot of people were vibing because they were just having fun playing Brawl Stars. Gadgets were a recent addition that kept the game fresh, along with the chromatic brawlers, new brawlers such as Nani, B, Max, and Mr. P kept the meta fresh and exciting, and even though Season 2 wasn't the first Brawl Pass, the Brawl Pass in general was still a relatively new feature, so there was so much hype surrounding what it was going to contain. It's kinda hard to elaborate and put it into more words, but Season 2 was just vibes. That's honestly the best way I can describe it. Even though all the things I described in this video were solid additions to Brawl Stars during Season 2, the real reason that Season 2 was so great is as simple as the fact that vibes surrounding Brawl Stars were at an all-time high. Hope you all enjoyed this video, let me know if there are any other Brawl Stars seasons you want me to talk about, and I'll see you all in the next one.